Blake Taylor here, Megan here. We're back for another rating of Hose by Lewis Hatcher. Um, before I get into that, if I feel a little off, it's because I just lost my dog. I did a recording yesterday of telling y'all that she was on the verge of dying. Well, within about 10 minutes later, she did actually die. And, um, you're seeing that first recording on Saturday, January the 8th. But you're seeing this in January 9th, and she passed away on January 4th. But today's reading is going to be the last few chapters uh, before part 2 of the book. I think it's the last two chapters. And so, it's chapter 27. Stanley dug his shovel into the ground. His hole was about three and a half feet deep in the center. He grunted as he, he, you know, he grunted as he pries, 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 pried up some dirt, then flung it over the, to the side. The sun was almost directly overhead. He glanced at his canteen lying beside his hole. He knew it was half full, but he didn't take a drink just yet. He had a drink sparingly because he didn't know who would be driving the water truck the next time it came. Three days had passed since the warden had scratched Mr. Sir every time and Mr. Sir delivered. Every time Mr. Sir delivered water truck or delivered water, he poured Stanley straight in, onto the ground. Fortunately, Mr. Pradinsky delivered the water more often than Mr. Sir. Mr. Pradinsky was obviously aware of what Mr. Sir was doing because he would always give Stanley a little extra. He filled Stanley's canteen and let Stanley take a long drink and then stop and top it off for him. It helped too. Vizera was digging some of Stanley's hole for him. Although, as Stanley had expected, the other boys didn't like to see Stanley sitting around while they were working. They'd say things like, Who, di who died and made you king? Or, Must... It must be nice to have your own personal slave. When he tried pointing out that he was the one who took the blame for the sunflower seeds, the other boy said it was his fault because he was the one who spilled them. I risked my life for those seeds, Magnet had said, and all I got was one lousy handful. Stanley had also tried to explain that he needed to save his energy so he could so he could teach Zero how to read. But the other boys just mocked him. Same old story, ain't ain't it, Armpit? X ray had said. The white boy sits around while the black boy does all the work. Ain't that right, caveman? No, that's not right, Stanley replied. No, it ain't, X-Ray agreed. It ain't right at all. Stanley dug out another shovel full of dirt. He knew X-Ray wouldn't have been talking like that if he was the one teaching Zero to read. Then X-Ray would be talking about how important it was, it was that he got his rest right. So he could be a better teacher, right? And that was true. He did need to save his energy so he could be a better teacher. Although, Zero was a quick learner. Sometimes, in fact, Stanley hoped the warden was watching them with her secret cameras and microphones. So he knew that Zero wasn't as stupid. So she knew so that she would know that Zero wasn't as stupid as everyone thought. From across the lake, he could see the approaching dust cloud. He, 
he took a drink from his canteen and then waited to see who was driving the truck. The swilling on Mr. Toe's face had gone down, but it was still a little puffy. There had been three scratches, scratch marks down his cheek. Two of the marks had faded, but the middle scratch must have been the deepest because it still remained. It was a jagged purple line running from below his eyes to below his mouth, like a tattoo scar. A tattoo of a scar. Stanley waited in line and then handed him his canteen. Mr. Sir held it up to his ear and shook it. He smiled at the wishing, swishing sound. Stanley hoped he wouldn't dump it out. To his surprise, Mr. Sir held the canteen under the stream of water and filled it. Wait here, he said. Still holding Stanley's canteen, Mr. Sir walked past him and then went around the side of the truck and into the cab where he couldn't be seen. What's he doing in there? asked Zero. I wish I knew, said Stanley. A short while, a short while later, Mr. Sir came out of the truck and handed Stanley his canteen. It was still full. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Mr. Sir smiled at him. What are you waiting for? He asked. Drink up. He popped some sunflower seeds into his mouth, chewed, and spit it out the, sh the seeds. Stanley was afraid to drink it. He hated to think what kind of vile substance Mr. Sir might have put in it. He brought the canteen back to his hold for a long time. He lived, left it beside his hole, and he continued to dig. Then, when he was so thirsty that he couldn't hardly stand it anymore, he unscrewed the cap, turned the canteen over, and poured it all out onto the dirt. He was afraid that if he waited another second, he might have taken a drink. After Stanley taught Zero the final six letters of the alphabet, he taught him to write his name, capital Z-E-R-O. Zero wrote the letters as Stanley said them. Zero, he said, looking at his piece of paper. His, his smile was too big for his face. Stanley watched him write it all over, or er, write it over and over again. Zero, 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 zero. In a way, it made him sad. He couldn't help but think that a hundred times zero was still nothing. You know, that's not my real name, Zero said as they headed to the rec room for dinner. Well, yeah, Stanley said. I guess I knew that. He had never really been sure. Everyone's always called me Zero, even before I came here. Oh, okay. My real name is Hector. Hector, Stanley, Stanley replied. Hector Zeroni. Chapter 28 After 20 years, Kate Barlow returned to Green Lake. It was a place where nobody would ever find her, a ghost town on a ghost lake. The peach trees had all died. But there were a couple of small oak trees still growing by an old abandoned cabin. The cabin used to be on the eastern shore of the lake. Now the edge of the lake was over five miles away, and it was little more than a small pound full of dirty water. She lived in the cabin. Sometimes she could hear Sam's voice it, coaching across the emptiness, em emptiness. Onions! Sweet, fresh onions! She knew she was crazy. She knew she'd been crazy for, three, for the last 20 years. 
Oh, Sam, she would say, speaking into the vast empty emptiness. I know it is hot, but I feel so very cold. My hands are cold, my feet are cold, my face is cold, my heart is cold. And sometimes she would hear him say, I can fix that. And she threw his warm arm across her shoulder. She'd been living in the cabin about three months when she was awakened one morning by someone knocking a knocking er no, by someone kicking open the cabin door. She opened her eyes to see the blurry end of a rifle two inches from her nose. She could smell trout washers. 30 feet. You've got exactly 10 seconds to tell me where you've been hidden, Lord Luke, said Trout. Or else I'll blow your head off. She yawned. A red headed woman was there with Trout. Kate could see her rumming, rummaging through the cabin, dumping the drawers, and knocking things from the shelves of, shelves of cabinets. The woman came to her. Where is it? She demanded. Linda Miller asked. Linda Miller? Asked Kate. Is that you? Linda Miller had been in the fourth grade when Kate Barlow was still a teacher. She had been a cute, freckled, freckled faced girl with beautiful red hair. Now her face was blotchy and her hair was dirty and straggly. It's Linda Walker now, said Chow. Oh, Linda, I'm so sorry, said Kate. Trout jabbed her throat with the rifle. Where's the loot? There is no loot, said Kate. Don't give me that, shouted Trout. You've robbed every bank from here to Houston. You better tell him, said Linda. We're desperate. You made him for his money, didn't you? Asked Kate. Linda nodded. But it's all gone. I dried it up with the lake. Or it dried up with the lake. The peach trees, the livestock, I kept thinking it has to rain soon. The drought can't be, can't last forever. But it just kept getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Her eyes fixed on the shovel which which was leaning up against the fireplace. She she's buried it. She she declared. I don't know what you're talking about, said Kate. There was a loud blast as Trout fired his rifle just above her head. The window behind her shattered. Where's where's it buried? he demanded. Go ahead and kill me, Trout, said Kate. But I sure hope you'd like to dig, cause you're going to be the diggy digging for a long time. It's a big vast vast wasteland out there. You and your children and their children can dig for the next hundred years and you'll never find it. Linda grabbed Kate's hair and jerked her head back. Oh, we're going to kill you, she said. But by the time we're finished with you, you're going to wish you were dead. I've been wishing I was dead for the last twenty years, said Kate. They dragged her out of bed and punished and pushed her outside. She wore blue silk pajamas. Her tur her tur turquoise darted black boots remained beside her bed. They loosely tied her legs together so she could walk, but she couldn't run. They made her walk barefoot on the hot ground. They wouldn't let her stop walking. Not until you take us to the loot, said Trout. 
And Linda hit Kay on the back of her legs with the shovel. You're going to take us to it sooner or later, so you might as well make it sooner. So she walked one way, then the other, until her feet were black and blistered. Whenever she stopped, Linda whacked her with the shovel. I'm losing my patience, said Warren Trout. She felt the shovel jab into her back, and she fell onto the hard dirt. Get up, ordered Linda. Kate struggled to her feet. We're being easy on you today, said Trout. It's just going to take to keep getting worse and worse for you until you take it to it. Look out, shouted Linda. A lizard leaped toward them. Kay could see its big red eyes. Linda tried to hit it with the shovel and Trout shot it shot at it, but they both missed. And the lizard landed on Kate Kate's bare ankle and it Sharp black teeth bit into her leg. Its white tongue slapped up the droplets of blood that leaked out of the wound. Kate smiled. There was nothing they could do to her anymore. Start digging, she said. Where is it? Linda screeched. Where'd you bury it? Trout demanded. Kate Marlow died laughing. That is the end of that part, and we will do more parts the next weekend. So, um, I hope you all enjoyed this reading. We will want to see more of the Holes book by Lewis Satcher. If you have not read it, I highly recommend you to read it. It's a good one, and it's a good movie, too. So, again, thank you for those that are probably in this, uh, that, few of those that will watch this or listen to it on podcast and thank you for those that say sorry for your loss about my dog thank you so much we had we had her for seven years and she was 10 years old so dog years would be 70 up until the last few months she had a good life and that's all really matters is that she's in a better place right now Hope you all have a good weekend and enjoy these readings and I will see you all back later. Rascal Fairy 2, Browning Simmer, Megan out. Peace out.